Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim after praising Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala and sending salutations peace and blessings upon the best of creation the jewel and crown of creation the beloved of Allah Almighty the coolness to our eyes the purpose of our lives the reviver of our hearts, the inspirer to our minds, the awakener of our hearts, the inspirer to our minds, the most honored one, the most praised one, the most generous one, the most kind one, undoubtedly he is the most beautiful one. None other than Sayyiduna Muhammad Rasulullah. صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وبارك وسلم There is no doubt or denying that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم is the greatest miracle to have been sent to mankind. And everything attached to him is also great. We know that the Prophet alayhi salat was salam's miracles in general. They split the moon into half. They would give life to innate objects. Animals would come and complain. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam rose the sun after it had set. He sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam could see in darkness as clear as they could see at night. He sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam could see, see behind as well as they could see from the front. The Prophet alayhi salat was salam without any shadow of a doubt is and was a walking miracle. Their birth was miraculous. Their life was miraculous. And along with this the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam's character. This in itself was a miracle. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about this in the Quran when he said, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ Jawad, above the door, in between the door. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ And indeed you are upon a majestic character conduct. You see, if we was to dissect this verse of the Quran and look at it individually in every aspect, Allah Jalla Jalaluhu said, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ Khuluqin Azim. Wow is Ataf and Inna Harf Mushabbaha bil fi'l. Inna gives the meaning of Tahkeek. Wa inna ka, indeed without any shadow of a doubt. You, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is directly addressing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Indeed you are. La'ala, lam is also for emphasis. Ala is harf jar and it gives the meaning of isti'la. Isti'la means to have control over. وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ Indeed you, O my beloved messenger and prophet, are certainly without any shadow of a doubt upon خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ Khuluq Azim 
is mawsuf and sifat. It's a descriptive. Khuluq means character and azim means majestic. Allah Almighty is praising the character of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this verse of the Qur'an. He said, indeed, you, O my beloved, without a shadow of a doubt, are upon a majestic character. You have this control, supreme control over. In the Arabic language, when a person says, I am sat on the chair, or I am riding on the horse, Rakibtu alal faras. I am riding on the horse. What he's saying is that I am sat upon the horse and I have supreme control over it, its reins. I can direct the horse left, right, forward, fast, slow, stop, start. I have that. This ala creates this meaning of isti'la, to have this control over. Allah Almighty didn't say in the Quran, Oh my beloved, you have a great character. Allah Almighty didn't say, Oh my beloved, you possess a great character. He said, Oh my beloved, you are upon a great character. You have the greatest character. And Allah is telling us that our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, he has this supreme control over it. Meaning, everything else is below the Prophet The shan of Rasulullah is even greater than that as well. Nabi Ali Salatu's status is even greater than Akhlaq Khuluq Azim. For to be on, there has to be something below. Allah Almighty is saying, Oh my beloved, you are even above Khuluq Azim. You are greater than everything. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam Wa innaka la'ala khulukin azim And indeed you, without any doubt, have ownership and control, supreme control over khuluk azim, this majestic azim character that Allah has bestowed the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we see that the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam in the Quran in another place. Allah Almighty said, فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَزَّنْ غَلِيزَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْ فَدُّوا مِنْ حَوْلِكَ Allah Almighty in the Quran is telling us about the character of the Prophet alayhi salatu salam that we have to understand character. Character, akhlaq, khuluq. This is something hidden within our chests. And these are qualities that need to be developed. To have a good nature is a sign of a good character. And character predominantly deals with you and other people. How you are with other people defines your character. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that there was no one who dealt with people better than the Prophet there was no one who had a more perfect inner than the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He alayhi salatu was salam, Allah Almighty perfected the character of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that they were able to convince all the people of their time, illa ma sha Allah, to accept Islam, to accept the way of Islam, to become Muslims. فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ And Allah Almighty then explains this in this verse. Allah Almighty praises the Prophet ﷺ and said, فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ Certainly it is through the mercy of Allah. لِنْتَ لَهُمْ That you was layin. Layin means very soft. لِنْتَ لَهُمْ That you were soft to those people. With whom? with the people of Mecca, those who didn't believe in Islam. It is through Allah's mercy that you, ha- you were soft to them. You were laying, you were gentle. وَلَوْ كُنْ تَفَزَّنْ غَلِيزَ الْقَلْبِ 
if you was foul mouthed, if you didn't speak right, and you see how you speak is an illustration of how well your character is. If you want to define the, a, a person's character, you merely have to just look at his tongue. They say, Al Lisanu Tarjumanu Al Qalb. The tongue, it is the interpretation of the heart, it's the interpreter of the heart. If you want to see how a person's heart is, look at his tongue. The tongue is an interpreter of the heart. If a person is sat there, walking, talking generally, he's always doing dhikrullah. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. He's doing dhikr. This is only being done because there is something being done within his heart. And if he sat there swearing, shouting, backbiting, lying, getting angry, then this is a reflection of what? The state of his heart. If a person is sat quietly, you know, we find people, they have very uh, quiet natures. They don't talk too much. This is the way their heart is. They are quiet. Always possibly doing dhikr khafi, silently remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ if it wasn't for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy, لِنْتَلَهُمْ You was made gentle, soft with them. وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَزَّنْ And if you was foul-mouthed, if you snapped at people, and you didn't react right with them, فَزَّنْ غَلِيزَ الْقَلْبِ You was harsh-hearted. There was harshness in your heart and in your speech. Very coarse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Oh my beloved, these people would have left you. They would have left you because of your mannerism, because of your etiquette, because of your character. Why didn't the people leave Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Because Nabi alayhi salatu wa sallam laysa bi fazzin wa la ghaliz al He was not foul in his speech. He was not harsh-hearted. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was soft. Rasulullah alayhi salatu was salam was gentle. They were kind. The Prophet alayhi salatu was salam was forbearant. They were good with people. It is this goodness and greatness of their character that people accepted Islam. وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَزَّنْ غَلِيزَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْ فَدُّوا مِنْ حَوْلِكَ لَنْ فَدُّوا مِنْ حَوْلِكَ They would have left you. Lan faddu min hawlik. They would have left you. And then Allah Almighty, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Addabani rabbi ta'dini. This far one as well, there's another one there. Who, who gave me adab? Who taught me adab? Who taught me character? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Addabani rabbi ahsana ta'dibi. That my Lord taught me the best character. Who did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's tarbiyah? Who nurtured the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fa'fu anhum. And this is an example in the Quran. Fa'fu anhum. Forgive them. Pardon them. They made a mistake. Pardon them. Fa'fu anhum. Overlook their flaws. Overlook their errors. Overlook their mistakes. We're humans. They were going to make mistakes. Fa'fu anhum. وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ And on top of this, do istighfar for them. Ask Allah to forgive them. وَشَاوِرْهُمْ فِي الْأَمْرِ And this is a, a great example of the majestic character of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whenever there were issues within the Muslim community, شَاوِرْهُمْ فِي الْأَمْرِ Go and sit and do mashwara with the companions. Ask them, what do you think? What's your opinion? What's your view? وَشَاوِرْهُمْ مُشَاوَرَةً مُشَاوَرَةً To do mushawara with them. Ask them, what do you think? وَشَاوِرْهُمْ فِي الْأَمْرِ فَإِذَا عَزَمْتَ فَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُتَوَكِّلِينَ And when you have a firm resolve, you've made your firm intention 
You've tried your utmost to do something. Fatawakkal ala Allah. Then leave it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You've done your best. You've had azmul qalb. You've tried very hard inside. You have tried very hard inside your heart. You've done your utmost. Faiza azamta fatawakkal ala Allah. Inna Allah yuhibbul mutawakkilin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who depend and rely on him. Those who do tawakkul ala Allah. Those who rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah loves those people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his character. You were soft with them. You was not foul-mouthed. You was not harsh-hearted. Had you had these weaknesses, these discrepancies in your character, people would have left you. They didn't leave you because they knew you had the best character. You was best in speech, best in conduct, best in mannerisms and etiquettes. There was no one better than the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And this is why when Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, Ummul Mu'mineen, she was asked, describe to us the character of the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam. Describe to us the character of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How was his akhlaq? And Sayyidah Aisha said, وَكَانَ خُلُقُهُ الْقُرْآنِ وَكَانَ خُلُقُهُ الْقُرْآنِ His character was the Qur'an. The Qur'an is the divine word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Qur'an has everything that you can and you can't do. The Qur'an is everything. Our whole life is the Qur'an. So it should be. Our life should be revolved around Al-Qur'an Al-Kareem, Kalam Allah. We, reading the Qur'an, pondering over the Qur'an, studying the Qur'an, Sayyidah Aisha said, if you wanted to see the theory of the Qur'an, open it and read. If you wanted to see a practical demonstration of the Qur'an, then go and look at the Prophet Wasallam. He was a practical embodiment of the Qur'an. His character was the Qur'an. Everything about his character was, was the Qur'an. See, the Aisha said, this is the best. And the best thing about the Prophet Wasallam, she continued further and she said, وَأَحْسَنُ nas خُلُقًا The Prophet Wasallam was best with the people. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as akhlaq was the best with the people. The way he tra- treated people, dealt with people, spoke to people, sat with people. Nobody had a better character than the Prophet alayhi salat was salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Habib alayhi salam said, إِنَّمَا بُعِثْتُ لِأُتَمِّمَ مَقَارِمَ الْأَخْلَاقِ إِنَّمَا بُعِثْتُ لِأُتَمِّمَ مَقَارِمَ الْأَخْلَاقِ I was only sent. إِنَّمَا is kalimatul الْحَصْرِ in the Arabic language. Hasar means exclusive, only meaning. Innama bu'ithtu. I was only sent li'utammima maqarim al-akhlaq. I was sent to perfect character. All the anbiya or rusul before me had great characters. But Allah Almighty sent me with the greatest character. They were all great in the way they were with their people. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent me to perfect this character. لِأُتَمِّمَ مَقَارِمَ الْأَخْلَاقِ To make this noble character, character in general, to give the greatest example of this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent me to mankind for this reason. This was the mission of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In one narration they say, إِنَّمَا بُعِثْتُ مُعَلِّمًا I was only sent to be a teacher. You know, when you look at the life of Rasulullah and you study his life, this is why I encourage all of you brothers to study his life. Learn about the Prophet Study his seerah mubarakah. Learn about how he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how they were born, how their childhood was, how they grew up, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nurtured the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam, how the Messenger of Allah Almighty lived in Mecca, how they stayed in Mecca for 40 years. For 40 years. قَدْ لَبِسْتُ فِيكُمْ عُمَرًا مِنْ قَبْلِهِ أَفَلَا تَعْكِلُونَ When Sayyidina Rasulullah reached the age of 40, they announced their prophethood. They told people, Allah has sent me to bring you towards the truth. He has now, inst- 
He has now told me to tell you that this is now my mission. My mission is to spread La ilaha illallah. Therefore, leave idol worship. Perfect your characters, become good people. And those people said, no, we do not accept you as a Nabi and Rasul of Allah. Why you? Why wasn't it us? You are like us. You're an Arab. We are Arabs. Your family is there. Why is it your family gets everything? Why is it that Nabuwat came to your family? The people, because of the egos and the animosity, because of this tribal animosity and hatred, they didn't accept the Prophet ﷺ. People like Abu Jahl, Umayyah bin Khalaf, people like Walid ibn Utbah, Utbah ibn Shaybah. These people didn't accept the Prophet ﷺ. But if you ask them, prior to the Ilan of Nabuwat, the announcement of Prophethood, describe the Prophet ﷺ, who, who gave the titles of as sadiqul Amin. Sadiq from Sidq. Sidq means truthful. The most truthful one, Al Amin from Amana. The most trustworthy. Who gave this title of As Sadiq Al Amin to the Prophet? The people of Mecca. Those very same people said, There is no one more truthful, no one more honest, no one more trustworthy than the Prophet, Muhammad Rasulullah. No one more than him. Yet the very same people rejected Rasulullah and Rasulullah said, Do you not know? Did you not see that I lived amongst you? You accepted me as the best amongst you. Yet when I asked you to leave the ways of your forefathers, the worshipping of idols, you said, Oh, I can't do this. So you accept me as the most honest and truthful, then accept that what I'm bringing you is the most honest and truthful as well. It has come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has ordered me and their mission was what? To teach people. Their mission was what? To perfect character. To make good characters out of people. People who used to do wrong, to change them. To bring them to the right way. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent for these purposes, these objectives. And we see that Examples of, throughout the life of Rasulullah a man came into the masjid of Rasulullah Masjid al Nabawi. This is now the first masjid built in the city of Medina Munawwara just before the borders had extended. The first masjid to ever be built in Islam was Masjid Quba. Masjid Quba was the first masjid. Rasulullah ordered for it to be built, then Masjid al Nabawi. Sahaba were there, everyone was sad. A man came inside the masjid and he urinated. He urinated inside the masjid. The Sahaba raised their arms. How dare he? How dare he urinate in the masjid? How can he disrespect the house of Allah? They were about to beat him up. They were about to tell him, what have you done? This is the house of Allah. People pray here. And you've come and, come and you've urinated here. Rasulullah stopped them and said, no, go get water and clean it up. He doesn't know. It's the first time. He doesn't know what it is. He doesn't know its importance. The Prophet didn't, didn't uh, slap him. The Prophet didn't tell him off there and then in front of everyone. He sallallahu alayhi wasallam's character was such that he taught him that this is not where you should urinate. The Prophet didn't turn him away from the house of Allah today if a young man comes into the masjid with shorts on, if he comes with sleeveless a vest on, immediately he comes without a hat on. Why is your hat not on? You're, and what happens? All of a sudden, people will, the old people will say, hey, look, no topi. He hasn't got his, he's got the incorrect libas on. Why do you think people have turned away, our youth have turned away from the masajid? Because of our characters. Because of the way we are, the way we deal with them. We can't treat them right. If we treat them right, they would never have this issue and problem. They wouldn't leave the masjid. That doesn't mean that what they have done is acceptable, but there's a way to tell people. That was the, the whole point of character is knowing the way to tell people. <coughs> In front of Imam Hassan and Hussein, there was an old man. This old man was making wudu incorrectly. 
This is now Adam. This is character. The scene that the old man was making wudu incorrectly. So Imam Hassan looked at Imam Hussein and said, he's not making his wudu right. How are we going to tell him he's much older than us? How are we going to tell him how to make his wudu right? He's making it wrong. If your wudu is wrong, your salah is not accepted. Because tahara is the condition for salah. And this is the character of Rasulullah's grandchildren. And Sayyidina Imam Hassan said, I'm going to make wudu. I'm going to make it incorrect. You will correct me and the old man will look and he will be taught like this. They didn't say, old man, you don't know how to make wudu. What are you doing? No. That wasn't the way of the Prophet Wasallam or his companions or his family. They had, there was a way to tell people the mannerism, this etiquette, this, the character of Rasulullah Wasallam. We see that the Prophet Wasallam used to live next door to an, a Jewish woman. She used to throw rubbish in the garden of the Prophet Wasallam. Every day she would throw rubbish. The Prophet Wasallam didn't turn her away. The Prophet Wasallam didn't say, what are you doing? Why are you throwing rubbish? Look at our streets. Look at Girlington. Look at Manningham. Look at the amount of rubbish there. If you park your car in front of someone, boom, there's a, why you park your car here? Don't park your car here. What are you doing? You're not allowed to park your car here. Look at how we deal with people. This woman constantly, for a number of weeks, months, years, was throwing rubbish into the garden of the Prophet Wasallam. The Prophet Wasallam would clear it. One day, two days, three days had gone by and she hadn't thrown anything. She hadn't thrown anything. The Prophet والسلام, went next door and inquired. They knocked on the door and she said, come in. And she found that it was the Prophet وسلم, standing there. She said, what are you doing here? She said, I've came to see how you are. For a couple of days now, you haven't thrown rubbish. It's not normal. I want to see how you are. And the Prophet والسلام, said this. And she said, you still came after everything I've done against you. I've spoke ill of you. I've said bad to you. I've thrown rubbish in your garden. I've not treated you right. Yet you still made time and you came to see me. And when she's seen this character of the Prophet ﷺ, how they were. You see, you've got to have a big heart. You've got to have a big heart. You've got to have a forgiving heart. And the Prophet ﷺ did this. As soon as they did this, the woman accepted Islam. She became a Muslim. This is character. This is what the Prophet ﷺ was a master of. This is what they perfected. The Almighty in the Quran told us, indeed you are upon the most majestic character. Nobody has a character like Al-Habib Al-Azam sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And we see and I finish and conclude and there's many examples of this. He sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam one day were doing tawaf around the Kaaba. There was a man there who had a dagger inside his thobe. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was doing tawaf and this man he said, today I'm going to assassinate the Prophet. I'm going to kill him. So Rasulullah is doing tawaf around the Kaaba. Sahaba are with him. And he's there, ready, waiting for the Prophet Wasallam to kill them. Nabi Ali Wasallam turned around and looked at him. And said, oh Fudala, what's inside your... Take out what's inside your thobe. You've come to kill me. So now Fudala said, how nobody knew. My wife didn't know, nobody in this world knew that I had a dagger behind my cloak ready to assassinate the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu salam. When Sayyidina Fudala realized only Nabi alayhi salam, and remember Rasulullah alayhi salam had ilmul ghaib, he had knowledge of the unseen, bestowed and given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Fudala dropped the dagger. And Rasulullah alayhi salam went to Sayyidina, this man Fudala, and they put the blessed hand onto his chest and heart. Sina Fudala said, I swear by Allah, before the blessed hand touched my heart, my chest, there was no one I hated more in this world than this man. By Allah, when he lifted his hand off my chest, there was no one I loved more in this dunya than the Prophet He accepted Islam. If a man came to rob you, to juke you, to sp shoot you, to kill you, to fight you, we would hold him enemy, we would hold 
a grudge against him for the rest of our life. How dare he do this to me? How dare he do this to me? Who does he think he is? This ego would come into us. This man came to kill the Prophet ﷺ. He left loving Rasulullah ﷺ more than everything. Why? Because of character. My brothers, work on your characters. And there's no better way for you to see how good your character is except how you deal with people and how you are and how you speak to people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to have good characters. May we work on our characters and akhlaq. Nothing will convince the non-Muslim to become a Muslim more than character. How you are with people, how you speak to people. This akhlaq is what Rasulullah came to perfect. This is what they made noble. And this is what they taught the ummah. And may Allah make us from those people as well. Wa akhru da'wa alhamdulillah rabbil alameen.